The first thing that visitors to Ackle notice is its wild and spectacular landscape. Five blue flag beaches, towering cliffs, a pristine environment and crystal clear waters surrounding our shores. It's been the source of inspiration to a long list of artists and writers of all levels from enthusiastic amateurs right up to the Nobel Prize winners. Some people come here for the relaxed and laid back atmosphere while many others come here to fulfil a sense of adventure that the wide open spaces provide. Without doubt, Ackle can be as relaxing or as exhilarating as you choose it to be. But hidden in plain view of the modern Ackle lies the historic landscape that supported our ancestors for more than 5,000 years. A paddle dating from about 3000 BC was found near the Cronog near Ducanella. Cronogs were built in water, thus forming artificial islands. While a few stood isolated, most shared the landscape with far older monuments such as burial mounds or cairns, possibly promoting notions of continuity with past generations. This is especially true here in Ackle. Spread across Ackle Beg, the Atlantic Drive and the southern slopes of Shilmore Mountain is a wide array of promontory forts and prehistoric tombs. The presence of these people would have brought major changes to the landscape of the area, which at the time would have been heavily forested. They brought crop cultivation to Ackle, requiring the clearing of forest for cereal crops, and also built walled fields for livestock. It's estimated that Ackle had a population of between 500 and 1,000 people at this time. The name O'Malley is still common in Ackle today, and the original O'Malley clan has had links to the area since at least the 12th century. The best known member of this family was Gráinne Whale or Grace O'Malley, the legendary Pirate Queen. Under her leadership, the O'Malleys controlled the waters of the western seaboard, imposing taxes and levies on all ships passing through their territory. Gráinne Whale's castle in Kildownet was built about 1429, roughly 100 years before the birth of Gráinne. As a child, she most likely lived on nearby Clare Island and was probably educated to a high standard for the time, since she spoke in Latin with Queen Elizabeth in 1593. Despite her life full of adventures, Gráinne lived to a ripe old age and she died of natural causes in 1603 at Rockfleet Castle. One of Ackle's most famous historical sites is that of the Ackle Mission or the colony at Dugert. In 1831, the Protestant Reverend Edward Nangle founded a proselytising mission at Dugert. The mission included schools and cottages, an orphanage and a small hospital and a hotel. The colony was very successful for the time and regularly produced a newspaper called the Ackle Missionary Herald. The crown jewel of Ackle's historical landmarks is definitely the deserted village at Schlievemoor. It's a haunting reminder of times past. Its last permanent residence left shortly after the Great Famine. Set at the foot of the south-facing slope of Schlievemoor Mountain, the village consists of the remains of almost 100 traditional stone cottages. They are set either side of an ancient pathway, almost all aligned in the same north-south direction, and they occupy one of the most sheltered areas of Ackle Island. The village, in fact, was actually three villages, Thor, Thor and Fahia. Thought that the village was occupied during several different stages in history, with some of the buildings being perhaps constructed on top of previous dwellings. Thorough study of the field systems surrounding the deserted village, archaeological investigations and historical research has established that settlement dates at least to the Anglo-Norman period of the 12th century AD. In the 1850s, its residents moved to the nearby villages of Dua and Pola. Its most recent period of habitation came to an end in the early 20th century when the cottages were used for bowling by the local population. As bowling houses, they were occupied during the summer months when the cattle would be grazed on the mountainside, but the residents would return to their villages in the winter months.